Um, on the phone, we have um, Mike Dupont from uh, Cisco. I understand he's up in uh, Bonny, Montreal, getting ready for the winter. <laughs> you there, Mike? We've got at least another week before snow hits. Come on, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> well, you know it is September, so. Uh, <laughs> winter's long there. Uh, so uh, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm uh, John Stone, Kelser's uh, Chief Technology Officer. Uh, today we have uh, with us um, folks from Cisco, um, Ed, um, and uh, he's the uh, Product Sales Specialist for uh, UCS Director. Um, we'll give you a little uh, quick Kelser overview um, and uh, kind of minimize the amount of slideware and then get right into the uh, uh, UCS director uh, demo. A little tiny bit of background on it and then uh, most of the time on, uh, on the demo. Uh, so, like I said, uh, this is easy for me because you guys all uh, all know us, so I don't need to, uh, to uh, dwell on the Kelser mission and, uh, and core values, but uh, like many of our, our other sessions, uh, today's is uh, really especially about uh, solving business problems. I see, I see UCS Director as a, a business problem solving uh, tool um, for automation and, uh, and orchestration um, in a UCS server environment, uh, whether it's a need to enable users for uh, self-service provisioning um, or to be able to keep up with, uh, with business demands and uh, not get bogged down in the routine activity around, uh, around manually setting up uh, servers. So I think it can be a great uh, business problem solver. Who's Kelser? Uh, we deliver innovative solutions um, that solve business problems. Um, so today's focus is really on our uh, IT infrastructure solutions. Uh, we'll talk briefly about our um, Cisco UCS adoption service, and then uh, UCS Director um, is a piece of software that can uh, wrap around that and uh, make it an even uh, more automated and orchestrated solution. So our, uh, our one little Kelser commercial, our UCS adoption uh, services, um, so this is, this is targeted towards uh, customers who do not have UCS in their environment today or have it and have not gotten off to, uh, to a smooth start uh, with it. Um, so our goal here is to provide uh, an end-to-end -end service from assessing your environment to uh, delivering, configuring, installing, and teaching you how best uh, to use uh, UCS. Um, so the idea is when uh, we get to the end of this uh, service, you have your UCS hardware, you know it was a good fit for uh, your business needs. Um, we've set it up in an architecture that's going to work for you over the long term, and uh, you understand it and have the keys and, and can go from there. So uh, you know, we reduce your time to market. Um, we like a guided implementation approach. If you're working with us um, along the way in implementation, then you know how it works uh, at the end. Um, you know, it's best not to learn independently with uh, technology like, like uh, UCS. It's powerful, but you have to think about it carefully and, uh, and plan it out. And uh, we're on the hook to make it work for you. So, you know, you bought it, you should have it up and working quickly, without delay. Uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Ed. I can to switch over to you, or? Yeah, just drop me the ball. And, okay. Uh, I'll see if I can. Mike, can you see that? No, I'm not seeing that, actually. I, think I have to uh, get the ball from Just, Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Good, because that didn't work quite right. <laughs> no, you just Now you just drag it, so that's terrific. Can you see that, Mike? All right, folks, so I had about, I don't know, 
eight or nine slides I was going to go through, but with the way the timing is, I'm not going to do that to you because I know you probably want to see the solution uh, in a real world situation. So, uh, as the introduction John said, my name is Ed McGetrick. I'm a product specialist for UCS Director here at Cisco. Mike Dupont is my sales engineer, the technical expert. So, just real quick to set the stage as far as what is UCS Director. So UCS Director is a software appliance. It's, it's really, uh, it's an OVA appliance. It installs with an OVF file, very quick and easy. There's no advanced services really required to get it up and running. It gets up and running in a couple hours. You do, maybe after a couple weeks, you have something really significant to show to your, your customer base. Its main function in life is about infrastructure automation. So what does that mean? That means all the infrastructure silo activity and tasks that are taking place in your environment um, from a network, from a server, from a storage, from a compute, from a hypervisor perspective, these are all the things that are being addressed when the data center gets a request to provision a server, whether it's virtual or bare metal. Uh, what UCS Director does is it allows you to automate those processes, use them over and over again via workflow orchestration. So this, this slide is from Gardner and it just really gives you an indicate, indication of what's forcing data centers to try to transform the way they do business. As everybody here knows, you know, we're used to instant gratification now, right? You find a new song, you're on iTunes, you're downloading it right away. You want to buy that new ladder, you're on Amazon, you're buying it tonight. Want to buy a new golf club, you're going over to eBay. So this is kind of the mentality that most of the business users today are bringing to the workforce. So you can imagine when they're trying to ask for a server to be provisioned and the data center tells them it's going to take two or three weeks, that's not acceptable, right? They look at that as poor service and what's happening. They're going right out to Amazon and they're buying it themselves. But what does that mean to the data center team? That means you're bringing in servers that might be unsanctioned. You don't know if it complies with what's supposed to be in there. So another big reason why data centers are saying, hey, Cisco, how can you help us transform the way we do business in our data center? Hence, that's what UCS uh, Director really addresses. And this bottom, bottom one is obviously comical, right? There's not many customers hiring more, hiring more headcount to help address some of these uh, needs in the data center. It's more like do more with less and make it more efficient. Um, so, what's UCS Director's value prop? Uh, out of the box, UCS Director is bringing about a thousand workflows, or we call them task libraries. So these are the most commonly requested tasks or effort that is being exhibited within those siloed stacks, the infrastructure t stack that I was talking about. So, you know, creating VLANs, creating LUNs, creating SAN zoning, uh, moving profiles for compute, powering on and off, uh, copying OS images over to hypervisors. There's, a, there's many of these different things that have to be done in all these stack layers in order for a server to be provisioned, whether it's virtual or bare metal. These are time consuming, resource consuming. So what UCS director is saying, hey, let's use these library, these orchestration workflows out of the box, drop them into a workflow, and now you don't have to recreate the wheel every time you're trying to create a VLAN. Automate those over and over. And usually we position that as, let's address about 70% of your most common repeatable tasks, and then maybe you want to customize the other 30%. But that's a huge savings for your uh, infrastructure admin team. And everything's uh, stored so you can report. It's all role-based security. It gets you that checkbox with audit and security. Anything that UCS, any device UCS director touches within your infrastructure can be quickly reported on and it's good for compliance. It's a single solution, addresses both virtual and bare metal physical provisioning. So unlike some of our customers out there, we're not telling you have to buy different components and five or six different components to do virtual and uh, bare metal uh, private cloud provisioning, comes out of the box. It's multi-vendor, so Cisco's actually giving customers choices, whether it be on the compute side, whether it be on the network side, whether it be on the storage side, hypervisor, you name it. So obviously we'd love you to be all Cisco, but we know that you have other strategic partners and you need to automate. And unlike some of our competitors, we're not locking you into one big framework with all our solution on the highway. 
It's a model-based orchestration, so it's not script-based like some of our competitors. So it's very easy, drag and drop, it's all workflows. So script basing is nice, but what happens when script base, script breaks, there's changes, there's maintenance level releases, you're calling advanced services every time that happens, and it's a little more challenging. Uh, as far as how do we fit into the ecosystem, there's really not too many things that we've run into within an infrastructure that we can't connect to. Uh, we have, like I said, the thousand workflows out of the box that usually cover most of what's needed. But sometimes we have uh, frameworks that customers want us to integrate to or something like that. So we use a North and Southbound RESTful API. We have PowerShell. We have SSH for network. We have command line. You name it. So there's always a way to quickly integrate to something else that might not be covered under the thousand workflows that are out of the box. And, and the bottom line is you know, quick return on investment, easy to use, uh, low advanced services, all resulting in total cost of ownership. And I'll stop at this one, but this is a snapshot that Mike's going to show you a view like this when he pulls it up. But this is basically a view of a single pane of glass giving you visibility and control into virtual data centers. So you might say there, there's Los Angeles, there's New York, there's Chicago, there's Singapore. So now you have access to all your data centers from one pane of glass. You can see they're all different up and down the stack. It shows you what's on each one. You can drill into that. And UCS Director really acts as the conductor to really manage and monitor everything that's going on with those virtual data centers. Um, any questions on, does that make sense as far as how it's positioned, what the story is? I have other slides. Well, the last one I'll do is uh, I'll do a pricing one for you because I know that always comes up. And then I'll turn it over to Mike. So how's the product priced? Everybody always asks us, you know, we, we go through this and like, tell me how it's priced. So it's not priced per VM. It's not priced per CPU. It's priced per blade or per physical server. So that's the list price on that. And it does virtual and bare metal uh, with that price. And so you buy it through your partner here at Kelser and you probably get 50% or whatever the discount is your company has negotiated with the, with the partner. At least 100. At least. You guys are all good guys. Um, we have enterprise license agreements. So those are for customers that are looking to automate maybe 250 servers or bigger. We also have starter bundles, which the 19 and the 49. So the small one is four servers. And that gives you the server, the network, the storage, the compute license. You have everything on there for quantity four. And with the 49K, that gives you 10 servers. So a lot of times customers say, well, let's dip our big toe in the water and see if this makes sense. You know, for 25 grand or whatever, it's not, big, not that too big of a commitment to see if it looks like something you want to roll out in the big picture. And we also have fixed uh, advanced services for like a week or two if you choose, but not really necessary. We'll take care of that for you. So you guys can handle that. Any, uh, any questions on that before I turn it over to Mike? I know that was real fast, but I want you to be able to see the product. Hey, and slide six, could you just put up slide six for one second? Tell me. Uh, there you go. Yeah, okay, so just to cover this one real quick. So this is the Cisco UCS management portfolio. So with UCS, we have the UCS manager that covers a single domain. With the uh, UCS central, that covers multiple domains for UCS. Uh, we have the application-centric uh, infrastructure and the APEC for application policy infrastructure management that's just coming out now with, for virtual uh, network provisioning. And then obviously we have the, uh, the VBlock and the FlexPod for converged infrastructure. So the point being now, UCS Director can talk to all those different uh, components. You don't have to go into each one separately to manage tasks and all that. UCS Director can talk directly to them and make that one more part of the stack that you can manage from a central pane of glass. Thanks. That's Is that what you want to yeah, do? Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to show the hierarchy does, of sure. how they work Does together. UCS Director require UCS Central, or can it just go right to UCS Manager? It can go right to UCS okay. Manager. Okay. But it does talk to both. But, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, it can it can work without UCS Central. Any other questions? No, oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. APEC is Cisco's name for software defined 
right. that, network. That's right. the, the latest. You can't call it SDN. Yeah. It's got to be. It's a whole other class on that, guys. Yeah. We can get together on that. All right, Mike, I'm going to uh, give you the ball in a second here, right? Yeah, no problem. We've got a new WebEx interface. If that does not look familiar to most of you, this just came out and it was a T29 uh, yeah. or something. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to. That's it why, does. That's why I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sorry. <laughs> new WebEx. Yeah, everything's kind of Apple S, right? That's a new term we have at Cisco Apple S. There's some great unified communication products out there that uh, really take it to the next level, but that's a different class. Yeah, guys, just to set the stage, so when Mike does the demo, there's two things he can demo, right? There's a self-service portal, which is, you know, you're providing your developers or engineers or users the ability to go up and pick from, hey, I want two CPUs, I want this database, I want this network, whatever the case is. And there's also an operations or an administrative view, which is more about what the internal data center admins are going to use. So it's really your call on... Do you want him to focus on anything specific, or would you prefer he just does a high level? Obviously, we don't have a lot of time, but would you prefer he just does a quick touch on both? Or uh, you guys let us know. Anyone? <laughs> Bueller? Bueller? I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. minimize the, the hardware selection, go and go to the administrative interface. That's not what. Yeah. I'd mean, like yeah. to see a little bit of it. Sure. But you don't have to dwell on that too much. Okay. All right, Mike. So maybe just start with the admin portion. <coughs> All right. No problem. So I will go ahead and swap over to my admin view. Uh, so this is my admin view. Um, where and it's it's a little different. You know what? I'll log into the end user view just so you can kind of see the difference. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll do the the admin view. Um, but the, the end user view is a very simple, very simple, very easy to use. So the whole idea is users shouldn't require training. So you know you've got your catalogs with your various you know categories of service items. So you can you know open those up and, and go in there. Um, then we've got our services, which allow me to see things I've ordered. If I go to virtual resources, allow me to you know manage my existing uh, in existing uh, virtual machines or right, right. physical resources if I've got access to physical infrastructure. So very simple, uh, easy to use interface. So we'll go back to the admin view, since that's where you guys want to focus. Um, so when we come into the admin view, um, first first page we end up with is this dashboard page. Um, this is an optional page. We don't have to have it. I have it because I like to have it. Um, it kind of gives me either a snapshot of where my infrastructure is at. For example, here it's showing me by various uh, infrastructure, uh, so where my, my compute is at from my various clouds. Um, here it's showing me, uh, you know, kind of a trend of my number of VMs for the last week. Um, and then if I go down, for example, I can see uh, my, my UCS chassis. Um, I can see how many blades are associated or unassociated. So, you know, these kind of things can help with the capacity management. Um, so here I see that I'm fine with physical server capacity, but if, you know, that little, if that unassociated server's pie started shrinking down to almost nothing, then I might need to add servers to my infrastructure. Um, you know, if I see my VMs are skyrocketing, I might need to pay attention to my capacity again. You know, if I've got resource utilization. So that's what the dashboards are for. So what I'll do is I'll head on over to the Converge view. And the Converge view is where I get to see my various um, logical groupings of my physical infrastructure. So here, for example, I've got in this lab, um, I've got a variety of pieces of infrastructure here. Um, so I'm connected to a, to a variety of things. Um, and I can manage them. So I've got a, a, I've got a, a Microsoft SCDMM, I've got a vCenter 5 and a 5.5, so I've got to manage those. Um, I've got one UCS domain, uh, but I could have multiple. Uh, so I've got a couple of Nexus 1000 Vs and uh, another device. This is a, it looks like a 7000, 7000, for some reason it's not showing the label. And then I've got a pet app. Um, so we've got that infrastructure. If I go to another, uh, another uh, site, uh, in this case, I kind of broke it up into Canada and the U.S. So I've got a Portland site here with, uh, with some infrastructure in it. Um, I've also got a Phoenix site with some infrastructure there. There we go. So, you know, in 
here we can see that I've got all sorts of different possibilities for infrastructure of where things are at. So, and I can manage these various pieces of infrastructure. So if I click here, we'll go back to my Montreal site. If I double click here on my vSphere 5.5, for example, I can double click in that guy and I'm now managing vCenter. Um, so I'm actually going, talking to the vCenter APIs and managing vCenter directly. Um, so again, I've got my dashboards. These are the, the dashboards I can add to my main dashboard page. Um, if I go, for example, to, uh, I can go take a look at my clusters. So I've got one cluster here. I've got my, my host nodes that I can see. Um, I can go see my resource pools. If I want another resource pool, I can create one from right here. So I can actually go through the process of creating a resource pool on this cluster. So I can go through all that process if I wanted to. Um, I can edit existing resource pools, delete them, all that kind of stuff. Um, I go to my VMs area. Um, so if I wanted to see my various VMs, these are all my VMs that exist. Um, I'll just click on a VM and now I can manage that VM. So there's a ton of actions that I can execute on this VM. So these are just the, the lengthy list of actions that I can execute on a VM. You know, simple stuff like power management, obviously, snapshots, um, but we've got things like, um, uh, you know, adding and removing disks, adding and removing Phoenix. We can, of course, resize the VM, CPU, memory, disk, all that kind of stuff, et cetera, et cetera. We can even set up lease management if we want to, you know, so we can have lease, lease expirations. You can ex you extend your lease. All that kind of stuff is in here. Um, so, you know, we got all that management from here. Um, so, and one of the things that sometimes people ask, well, oh, okay, this looks like it's doing some of the same things vCenter is using, and that is absolutely correct. This is doing a lot of the same capabilities that vCenter has. You could either use vCenter on the back end or you could use UCS Director. And we've even seen some companies that go, you know, you've got some admins that are really, really just virtualization admins. So they're really comfortable in vCenter and they just keep using vCenter for all their, you know, everything they do day in, day out. Some other admins that maybe are a little more, you know, managing different levels of infrastructure. So they manage VMware, but they'll also manage possibly networking and storage and things like that. They might use UCS Director a lot more because they're interested in um, the single pane of glass capability that this offers and being able to do everything from a single interface without having to log in, log out all that time. Um, so both are work you can use. You know, you can use the back end infrastructure, you can use the front end uh, of UCS Director, it's as you choose. Does all that make sense? I know I'm going a little fast here. Um, any questions so far? Silence. Silence. The crickets are speaking. Guys, I, I love interactive demos, so if you have a question, please pipe up, please say something, stop me in my tracks. I will, I will answer a question. If I can't answer it, um, I will find out what the, what the right answer is and get back to you guys. So don't hesitate to, to speak up if you want to go in a specific direction. One thing I like to show in this VM view, I mean, obviously, if I wanted to do something like resize the VM, you know, that's kind of the dialog box. So, you know, it, it tells me how many CPUs and how much memory it has, and I can, I can change that to, to whatever I have available in my drop-down list. By the way, these drop-down lists can be customized they're based on the, the virtual data center that this VM is provisioned to. Um, a virtual data center is effectively a, a construct of where I can provision infrastructure. So a virtual data center might be, uh, I might have like two virtual data centers. I might have a, a gold one that's got the solid state drives in the back end and the storage array, but I might have a bronze one that's only got, uh, you know, SAS drives. And of course, the cost model would be different. So if I've got my gold virtual data center, it might be, a, you know, 10 cents an hour, whereas my bronze one might be just 5 cents an hour. So we've got all that capability in there as well, you know, talking about the, you know, the cost models, the virtual data centers. And the virtual data centers can impact all sorts of things. What network you're on, uh, what uh, vCenter cluster or data store, you know, data center, all that kind of stuff. So all those things are encompassed in there. It gives you a tremendous amount of control over where things are provisioned and, and how you're able to use them. So one thing I want to talk about is the stack view. I love showing this. Um, I find this to be a really cool view. Uh, so the stack view allows me to see my, my virtual machine and to, to really in a graphical view to see what it's relying on from an infrastructure standpoint. So I can see that this is a Red Hat uh, VM. It's, it's, this is its name and IP address. I can see which network adapter. It's actually got two, so I can be changing over to the other one. 
And you'll notice that when I change to the other one, it's showing me a, a different VLAN, so let me change back. So this is VLAN 425. If I go back to this one, it's VLAN 100. So it's showing me the different networks, and when I change, it shows me the, 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 the DV port groups, the V switches, which ESX host uh, everything is sitting on, and all the way down to the, the network switch, the blade, um, and I can even dive down to the storage. For some reason, I'm not seeing the storage here. Uh, this might be actually on a, a local drive or something like that that I'm not managing. But this allows me to tie my, uh, my VM all the way down to the physical infrastructure. Very useful when I'm troubleshooting. Someone calls up, you know, and, and says my, my app is running slow, and then you've got to go figure out, well, what's it relying on? You know, you can get all this information by going to different interfaces and your different management tools. But the nice thing is you all have it here from a single pictographic view, and you can see right away, oh, I'm relying on this, 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 and now I can go dive into those individual components and see if I, I've got issues at that level. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so Mike, yeah, Mike, what about um, managing like NetApp and HP and, you know, we have a, uh, you know, all, all customers have different environments. One of the compelling things I like yeah. about this is that I have tremendous flexibility. So I was wondering if you could yeah. see some of that. Um, I'll dive into that in just a sec. Um, okay. First, I want to talk about another thing at the, you know, at the, the hypervisor layer um, that I like to talk to, but I will get into those other layers in just another 30 seconds top. Um, so you're just a teeny bit ahead of me, and I'll get right there. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our map reports, um, because our map reports kind of give us this heat map, which again, kind of ties to that stack view, some of those, uh, you know, the idea of being able to check for performance if you've got people calling up, troubleshooting, that kind of stuff. Um, so I can look here, I'm looking at my CPU utilization. So I can see across all my hosts and all my different data centers what the CPU utilization is like. Some are light. Uh, these are labs, so of course they're fairly light. Um, I can look at VM density. This can be really helpful. So for, your, for example, in my vCenter 555 uh, environment, I, I probably have some issues with my load balancing because I got 14 VMs active on my ESX David 1 host, and I've got three VMs on my ESX David 2 host. So uh, you know, I, I, might, uh, I might need to look at load balancing. I got the same problem here in my vCenter 50 environment. I got one, one VM on one and 20 on the other. So these kind of heat maps can really help me see when my, my environment is not working at, in an equilibrium uh, as is the case here. I can also look at inactive VMs if I'm looking to find out um, if I'm dealing uh, VM sprawl, which in this case uh, I do have VM sprawl because I've got a ton of VMs which are sitting inactive. Um, so I need to start looking at doing some cleanup. Uh, probably start with the largest boxes, so this little guy here. Um, so I can see here it says SL, don't delete, blah, blah, blah. You know what, I might actually need to go talk to that person and go, you know what, this machine's been inactive for 30 days, it's taken up almost 300 gig of disk space. Do you really need this machine? I know you say don't delete, but do you need it? You know, that kind of stuff. So, so let me go back to your question, which was how to manage the, the physical infrastructure. So, so far we've been talking about the virtual, I, I mean, I focused exclusively on VMware. Uh, we can go into Hyper-V as well. I mean, if I double click on that, you'll see, you know, kind of the, the similar capabilities. Now, of course, we're focused at an SCVMM level. So, you know, across the top, we've got uh, slightly different tabs, many of the same ones. Um, but, you know, it is focused on, on you know, SCVMM. For example, we talk about the library server here. So, you know, here, uh, you know, we, it's, it's a different nomenclature, but similar concepts. This, this looks so, like it could be um, really other, useful. Other, other, my, my, question, my question. My yes, question. I, I was going to say, this looks like it could be really useful for people who have like a VMware and a Microsoft environment, or maybe they're transitioning from one to the other. Do you, do you, do you yep. see that in practice? Do I see that in practice? Yeah. Um, I see people in practice running with both my VMware and Microsoft, yes. Um, transitioning, um, transitioning is always more challenging. Oh, I, I, I just meant using UCS Director yeah, no. to manage it. Well, yeah, and, and the, uh, that's one of the value props for UCS Director, right? Because everybody started out as a VM shop, so obviously everybody's got VM. But more and more people are looking for flexibility and they're bringing Hyper-V in and, and, and KVM and different alternatives mm -hmm. where, you know, VM and where is saying, we're going to lock you into our solution. It's got to be all VM up and down the stack where we're saying, hey, we want you to be all Cisco, but we're going to let you have flexibility on storage, on hypervisors, on compute, whatever it is. So, yeah, we're seeing more and more yeah. of that. 
And that's a compelling event for people to actually say, hey, we've been a long time VMware customer. It's not going away, but we have new factions that are coming in with more Microsoft oriented, mm -hmm. and we want to have that flexibility. Okay. Yeah, and to, 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 to repeat what Ed said there, he said, it, he said it quickly, so I'm not sure whether people picked up on that, but we also support Red Hat's Enterprise Virtualization Manager. So if you're looking at a KVM shop with our HCVM, then we can add that as well. So, you know, we're really dealing with these multi-hypervisor, you know, a multi-solution, multi you know, environments where we're really trying to do cross-management across all platforms. So, um, we've got UCS management. Um, I will skip that for now. We'll go to NetApp since that was one of the things that was brought up. You brought up HP and NetApp. Um, so here I've dived into a, to a NetApp device that I can manage. Um, in this case, I actually have to dig down a la layer deeper. So I double click on, on the, the NetApp, uh, the storage filer directly, and now I've got a lot of these same tabs that I saw across the top that I saw with VMware, but now, of course, they're all virtualization centric. So I can see the, the VMs here. So these are the VMs that are running on this NetApp. Um, so I've got the, the same access to the VMs, but now instead of seeing the VMs at the virtualization layer, I'm seeing the ones tied at the storage layer. So, you know, it's a different perspective. So the list might be different because, you know, it's here I can see these are vCenter 5.5 and these are 5.0. So, you know, different VMs. I can go see my, whoops, let me get rid of that. There we go. Uh, I can see my aggregates. Um, so if I wanted to, I could create a new aggregate. Um, so, you know, I can go through this process. Uh, if I wanted to, I can hit the disk list. Most of my disks are used, um, so I've only got one choice here, uh, but I can actually do that and go through the process. I'm not going to do it. These are real live systems, by the way. These are not simulators. These are not mock-ups. This is real live infrastructure in the back end, uh, which is why I don't create too much. <laughs> I don't want to blow things up too often. So, But I can go see my volumes. Uh, if I want to go create a volume in here, um, so I can go through the process of creating volumes, Q-trees, quotas, LUNs, uh, you know, so I can go, you know, see all my LUNs that exist. Um, I can go to my disks, so I can see my disks, and I can actually view the specific details of a given disk, that kind of stuff. Was there anything specific you were looking at from a NetApp perspective, or were you just looking to kind of get a touch and feel for it? Yeah, I was just looking to, um, you know, show the group that we can manage NetApp and HP <coughs> and, you know, uh, IBM as well, so on the storage side, just right. like one, one pane of glass. Yeah. So, so just right. so. a quick, quick review then, what, what is the storage compatibility matrix? Yeah, so basically just want to make sure that we get that message across. <coughs> so IBM, HP, HP. and, uh, you yeah. know, NetApp, NetApp EMC, well, for, no, for storage, NetApp, EMC, we have Nimble now that was just created, and we have um, IBM Common, right? Hitachi and IBM Common, Mike? Yeah, yeah, and uh, we've got, there, there's several ways that these things get developed. Um, the NetApp and EMC stuff has been developed primarily by the engineering team that built the product. Um, there are so many different vendors out there for storage, network, compute, all that kind of stuff. And one of the things we've done is we've provided the software development kit too, and you know we'll we'll, we'll target IBM and HP, uh, IBM and um, uh, and Hitachi here because I know those are, are imminently coming. We provided the SDK to those vendors, and they're actually building the extension to UCS Director, and we'll deliver it to Cisco so we can include it in the product. Same for Nimble. Nimble has actually done it. Um, I've even got a, a blog post of, of what Nimble is showing, how they built an SDK. Using the SDK, they built the extension to UCS Director so that it's there. So, um, so I mean, if I don't have any other storage here, do I have some other in some other locations? Let me actually take a look here at what other stuff that I might have for storage. <laughs> I got multi vendor here. So I got a VNX here. So. so I see that as a really compelling differentiation, to say the least. Is it the top of the list for that differentiation, or do you have others besides um, multi vendor ca capability? Yeah, I mean, I think that's. that's customers want to have the security to know that our environments are constantly changing. We have M&A, we have fallouts with vendors, we have new applications. We want to we want to make it so we're not locked into a big framework. Mm -hmm. And when I say 
competitors, but mainly I'm talking about VMware, that's kind of what they're pushing right now. You know, you're going to put our five or six different cloud components in there. And then, by the way, we don't really work good with Cisco's uh, network side, so now you're going to buy, v you're going to buy the uh, NSX. We're going to sell you that, too. And it's just huge services. It's, it's a big thing where this is just one component. It's not five or six framework components to manage and install. And the customer has flexibility that I can address my VMware needs today, today, but I'm covered for a Hyper-V down the road. Um, you know, my storage changes, I have that. We have different pockets that use different things. It gives them a sense of comfort that they're in a good spot by buying this solution today if things change tomorrow. How do you and we are constantly improving the solution. So, for example, the last release that came out about a month ago, we added F5 load balancers. Uh, we added, I know the next release is going to add net scalers. Um, we added the last release, uh, we always supported HP ILO, we actually um, added HP's OA, so their onboard administrator for their chassis administration. So, you know, we keep expanding the products, features and functionalities and capabilities from a hardware management standpoint. So even though it may not be in the compatibility matrix today, quote unquote, you know, it's something that has a very high probability of getting added sometime in the future. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's competitive or not. I mean, HP servers are very, very competitive, you know, from a, a competitive standpoint, but we're still shoring up those capabilities within UCS Director because the market's requesting it, and it's simple as that. How does that affect the pricing model for someone like EMC? Do I now need to get their units there, or could this independently manage that component? Because that, that's usually where EMC things are pretty hard. It is the add-ons needed to manage the environment? Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Um, I, I think you need the Unisphere. I think you need the control station for EMC. Um, so uh, it, it really depends on which piece of infrastructure you're talking to. So if you're talking about EMC, I know with uh, VMAX we need the um, solutions enabler, um, but I think that's free. Um, I think that's 